Oh my gosh, don't sneak up on me like that. Though, I guess I'd do you an explanation for all of this. You see, Richard and I are on our way to record next week's episode of the Chip Tide Show on location. And in case you're wondering, no, it has not gone smoothly. We've been on the road for about 30 minutes now. And we've already tried to kill each other four times. We are not compatible co-workers, but he's... Actually, why do you stick around, Richard? But let's not dwell on that, because today we're leaving the chalkboard and the laboratory behind and bringing you an episode from the great outdoors. But I have to say, this road trip we've been on has got me thinking about Pokemon and all the insane journeys you go on in those games. I mean, think about it. There are rarely any paved roads in Pokemon, certainly not any major highways. If you really want to be the very best, like no one ever was. You gotta be traveling across continents on a foot. Or do you? Are these really epic odysseys that take you to faraway lands you've never seen before? Or is it just a jaunt down to your neighbor's house down the street? In other words, which Pokemon region is the biggest? And how big are they really? The answer to both may surprise you. For some context for anybody watching this in the future, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are being released in just two short weeks, and the Paldea region promises to be the largest region we've explored to date. So let's put that to the test. Now I know what you're thinking, Charlie, the game isn't even out yet. It's impossible to know for sure just how big the region is when all we've seen is a few tiny glimpses and trailers, right? Nah man, impossible is for the unwilling. We may have only been shown tiny pieces of this game, but one little sliver of information is all I need before I pounce, before I use the fundamental forces of nature itself to dredge up their dirty little secrets. And by that, I mean I'm, I'm using math to calculate how big, the, uh, how big the region is. As you can see, I'm a little pressed for time for this week's episode, but luckily, doing something like this is actually incredibly simple. The main mathematical principle we're going to be exploiting in this video is algebraic proportions. I know that was probably the most boring sentence ever said, but trust me, it's actually super easy. Basically, all we need to do is figure out how tall one reference point in the region is, and we can use that to in turn figure out how big the whole thing is. Let me explain. As part of the promotion for the game, the Pokemon Company released an official map of the Paldea region. And looking at this map and comparing it to trailer footage, it seems to be very, very accurate down to the location of individual rest stops, these weird looking spire things, the exact position of buildings in cities. Basically, it's a one-to-one -one replica of the actual region. So, in order to find out how big the whole region is, we actually just need to figure out how big one thing on this map is. I'm going to choose this building as our reference, the Academy, because we've seen it from a lot of different angles in the trailers, and we can get a better sense of how big it actually is. We can confirm that the building shown in this shot from one of the trailers is the same as the one on the map. Note the rounded corner towers, the grass patches on the other side of the walkway, and the blue street lamps. We can see that this building has three clearly distinct stories. The average height of a single story of a building is around 14 feet. We can verify this by looking at the people standing in front of it. The perspective is a little weird, but it's clear that they are a little under half as tall as the story. This isn't a super reliable measurement since we have no idea how tall these people actually are, but it's enough to give me confidence that our 14 foot estimate is probably close enough. So we know how tall one story of this building is, now let's compare that to our map. One story of this map is 7 pixels tall, so now we have our proportion. There are 7 pixels per 14 in real life feet. Now looking at the map as a whole, we can see that it is around 7,753 pixels wide, but we don't know how many feet. For anyone here who hated algebra, I'd like to apologize for the flashbacks in advance. But also, you're welcome because I'm about to teach you a trick that'll make problems like this so much easier. 
It's called the butterfly method. Basically, this number times this number equals that number times that number. I'm not gonna prove it for you. I'm an engineer, not a mathematician. Basically, some real smart guy a long time ago figured this out and uh, you don't have to question it. So now we can change this into an equation that looks much more like a regular algebra problem. All that's left is to divide the whole thing through by this number to get x alone, and we're done. For anybody looking for a more general version of this trick to put on your like cheat sheet or something for your next exam, I got you champ, go get them. And if you have a teacher who doesn't let you use cheat sheets, pro tip, you can actually type stuff like this into the program section of your graphing calculator. It's a pain, it takes a while, but it's basically a free note sheet on every math and science exam he'll ever take. And in case there's any math teachers out there who are watching this for some reason, and you don't let your students use a cheat sheet, or worse, a calculator on exams, what the hell are you doing? Why are you making these kids memorize all these equations? I work as an engineer in real life, and I can say from experience that if you're doing any kind of math beyond basic addition, or even basic addition for that matter, for your job, and you are not using a calculator and looking up formulas, you are being irresponsible and perpetuating an outdated practice because the American education system is fundamentally opposed to change. And all that relates to this video because, because what was I talking about again? All right, so uh, solving for x, we can figure out that Paldia is 15,506 feet or 2.93 miles across. For reference, Spain, the country that Paldia is based on, is nearly 6 hundred miles across. Madrid, the capital city of Spain, is 50 miles across. So yeah, traveling coast to coast in Paulia isn't exactly an epic week spanning journey. It's more of a leisurely hour out of your afternoon. In fact, on a clear day, you can see around three miles to the horizon. So if not for this massive mountain in the middle of a region, if you were standing on one coast, you would actually be able to see the ocean on the other side. But that's just one region. How does it compare to all the others? Let's start off with Galar, because we can use the exact same method we just used for Paldia. In Sword and Shield, your character is canonically 15 or 16 years old. The average height of a male around this age is about 67 inches. Using this picture, we can find that the tree models in Galar are three times your height or 201 inches. We can then compare that to these huge bridge columns in the wild area to find that they are 352.5 inches tall or nearly 30 feet. Comparing that to the bridge on the map, we find that Galar is 0.454 miles across. Admittedly, yes, it is significantly taller than it is wide, but the official map has this extreme parallax effect and is kind of tilted on an axis to allow us to see the front of buildings instead of perfectly top down, which means the height here isn't totally accurate. There is the official in-game map that is very stylized and a lot less detailed, probably not totally accurate, but using it we can find that Galar is roughly one and a half miles top to bottom. All right, we're making good progress so far. Now let's move on to the most overrated region of them all, Kanto. That's right, I said it, it's bad. This one's a bit more tricky because the size scaling in these older Pokemon games is, well, it's whack. Because it's a sprite-based game, everything has to fit within squares, and the whole world is super stylized without much regard for continuity. The interior of buildings are much larger than their exteriors, cave entrances and exits don't line up to where they should be, the safari zone should lie directly under the cycling road, which is actually above nothing but ocean, it's a mess. Basically, it would be a fool's errand to try and make any serious measurements or conclusions about the size of these older regions. But that's never stopped me before. Now, according to the Pokemon Company, the Kanto region is supposed to be approximately the same size as the Kanto region of Japan, which is around 125 miles across. There's just one problem with that, though, and that's that the Pokemon Company is lying to you. And I can prove it. In the Generation 4 games, you get the Pokemon equivalent of an Apple Watch, complete with a pedometer. Using this, we can see that each tile in the game represents one step. I found this handy dandy chart that gives you the average length of your running stride depending on your height. 
In the Kanto games, you are canonically 11 years old. Yep, the 10 year old thing is a creation for the show, not the games. 11 year olds tend to be around four and a half feet tall, but this list only goes as low as five feet. But they're also booking it, so I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt and say they've got longer than average strides. So if our stride is around 25 inches, that means that the distance from end to end of one tile is exactly that, 25 inches. Each tile is 16 pixels across, meaning that our new proportion is 16 pixels to 25 inches. The whole of Kanto is 6,528 pixels across, making it just over a tenth of a mile wide, or a little more than two football fields across. Yikes. Now, I know this seems way too small, but hold your comments for a little bit longer because we're going to come back and address this later. We can use this exact same method to figure out the size of all the 2D regions. One tile is always 16 pixels across, and though our protagonist does grow slightly older as the games go on, and not enough to significantly change their stride length. So, for simplicity's sake, I'll just keep it at the 25 inch stride. Using that same equation, Johto is 0.2485 miles across, Hoenn is 0.3156, and Sinnoh is 0.34 miles. See? Look how easy that was. It just goes to show you how useful math can be. And no, Algebra 1 teachers out there, I didn't memorize this formula, and you can bet that I used a calculator because it's the 21st century, why are we making kids memorize nonsense like the quadratic formula when there was literally no situation in which you would need to use it and aren't able to just look it up, or better yet, use Symbolab or something to just solve the equation for you? Anyway, for those of you wondering about Legends Arceus, and we'll get there in a bit. Unova is a bit tricky because it has a lot of caves separating the western side of the region, and it's not exactly clear how much space in the overworld they take up. And also, there's these big bridges across the region that are 3D models instead of traditional tiles, and their scaling and perspective is inconsistent and they don't exactly line up. It also added this little disconnected area in the sequels, and it's not super clear exactly how far away that's supposed to be. But as far as I can tell, the distance from the edge of Mistralton City to the edge of Undella Bay is about 0.3302 miles across. Might be a little more, might be a little less, but I think this is a pretty reasonable estimate. So it seems like the Pokemon regions have gotten slightly larger over time, but still no more than a five minute walk across in a straight line. And just like that, we've flown through five generations. See, I told you this was going to be an easy road trip episode. Now, on to Kalos. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. This one, uh, I'll admit, this one broke me. The first five regions were all super simple with their neat little tiles and consistent perspective, but then Generation 6 had to come along and make everything 10 times more complicated. When looking at the 2D regions, I could just stitch together images of all the routes and then measure exactly how many pixels they were across, bada bing, bada boom, we're done. Well, for Kalos, it's not that simple. Comparing the actual routes to the official map of the region, we can see that Game Freak changes the perspective on you all the time. Routes are no longer in neat perpendicular angles. Places like the Parfum Palace and Anastar Sundial are not actually south facing like the game implies. And there's all sorts of inconsistencies in the world, like how the area past the Anastar Sundial is shown to be an ocean with islands, even though that's supposed to be where the snowy Route 17 is. What I'm saying is I have absolutely no idea how to accurately get any measurements from this region. No, that's, that's literally it. That's not a setup for a joke or some big revelation or something. I got no idea what to do with this one. Wait a minute. Richard, buddy old pal, my good assistant of mine, do I have a job for you? Wait, wait, no, Richard. Richard, come back. Richard, where are you going? Richard, you bastard, come back. Richard! In order to find out how big Kalos is, we're resorting to an old engineering axiom. Good enough. Route 1 is 18 steps long, or 37.5 feet. Comparing that to the official map of Kalos, we find that Route 1 is 24 pixels long, and the whole map is 1,038 pixels across, making Kalos around 0.301 miles across, assuming that there's no parallax or perspective change, which there definitely is. And you know what? That's in the ballpark of all the others, so I'll call it close enough. 
and surely that's the hardest one of the bunch. So now let's move on to a Lola. Oh no! Oh, not only is Lola a series of islands where the exact distance between them is unclear, it's also got all the same problems as Kalos, but somehow even worse. Changing scales and perspectives, routes not lining up, no great image of the whole route to stitch together, and to make matters worse, the official map has this super extreme fisheye parallax effects, meaning it is not reliable at all. But then, just when all hope seemed lost, my saving grace descended like an angel from the great beyond. The great, the powerful, the Rotom Dex. <laughs> That's never a sentence you thought you'd hear. But yes, it seems that Game Freak took pity on fools like me and included in the Rotom Dex very detailed maps of all the islands. And the best part, they're completely top down. No longer would I have to put up with weird canted perspectives for the first time I had an actual helpful map. And that took this from a very involved process filled with loads of assumptions to something that took literally a minute to figure out. The road in Haoli City is six steps wide, so using the same proportion method that we've been using this whole video, we can find out that the main body of Mele Mele Island is 0 0.086 miles across, or about the length of a single football field. Comparing that to the jank map from before, which is unfortunately all I have to go on to determine the distance between the islands themselves, we find that the easternmost point of Ula Ula to the westernmost point of Pony is about 0.359 miles long, which is actually on par with the other regions. And there you have it, the official size of every Pokemon region scientifically proven using mathematical relations. Take that, Game Freak. Oh, they're all just the same size as the places they're based on. What a joke. You're telling me that Kanto is the size of a region in Japan, Kalos is all of France, and Unova is New York City? What a joke. Numbers never lie, my friends. But I can hear you all screaming the obvious contradiction here at me. These are just RPG overworlds. They're not meant to be to scale, and you, would be absolutely right. They're almost certainly not to scale. That's the reason why the insides of buildings are so much bigger. It's just game design. And this is where Legends Arceus comes in. In my eyes, any of the Pokemon Switch games where the proportions in the world are much more logical are absolutely to scale. Paldea is actually three miles across. Galar is actually a mile and a half tall. And crucially, the Sinnoh region in Legends Arceus is to scale. So, if we can compare something that's present in both the original DS games and in Legends Arceus, then we can figure out the scale of the regions in those older games, and then we can figure out how big they are actually supposed to be. And maybe, just maybe, we can dethrone Paldea as the largest region. Unfortunately, since Legends Arceus takes place hundreds of years before the original DS games, much of the landscape is very different between the two. But there is one landmark that I can find that remains totally consistent between the two. Snowpoint Temple. The temple is slightly changed. For starters, the front door faces directly at Lake Acuity to the west in Legends Arceus, whereas in the originals, the entrance faces south. This means that at some point, they must have moved which side the entrance to the temple was on. The side of the temple in Legends Arceus even matches up super well with the one in Diamond and Pearl, with four support pillars and a large gap in the middle where the door would eventually be put in. Hey, nice attention to detail! In Pokemon Platinum, it is six paces from Column Center to Column Center, but in Legends Arceus, it is 18. This suggests that the overworlds in the older Pokemon games, prior to Generation 8, are downscaled three times to what they actually are. And so, here is the upscaled size of all the older regions totally to scale. This is still incredibly small, but hey, a few of them were able to crack a mile this time. It might not have been as easy as I thought, but it was well worth it because now we, we, now we know how big they are. What was the point of this whole thing? I mean, were any of you actually wondering this? There wasn't even some big, satisfying reveal or narrative arc. It was obvious Paldia was going to be the biggest from the beginning. What did we actually learn today? That little trick of how you can 
type notes into your calculator so you can get past outdated teaching techniques? Yeah, okay, no, now that you mentioned it, it was totally worth it. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta go track down my assistant Richard so we can hit the road for next week's episode. Pretty sure he, he ran off into the woods back there somewhere. Huh. Kinda looks like bears could be back there though. And I'm not trying to mess with any bears. Hey, you know what? He's probably fine. I'll just uh, hit the road. He can find his way there eventually. Hey, Richard, catch you later.